Welcome back. What we're going to do today is talk about finding domains and we're going to find ranges of functions. If you have a graph, it's fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and draw ourselves a graph here. We're going to start with a nice parabolic shape. We like parabolic shapes. Now, if I wanted to know what the domain is, domain, it again, is my inputs or my x values. So to look at the graph, I determine where do I start. And I always start on the left-hand side or at negative infinity. So way out here, even though you can't see it, this is a negative infinity. And I read it from left to right because we're English, we read from left to right, and so I'm going to end over here at positive infinity. And I'm going to determine what my inputs are. If I have a graph, I want to look at the ends of the graph. So I'm going to look right here, looking on the left-hand side. I notice that that is an arrow. That means that my domain, I can just write it as D equals, D for domain, and it has an arrow, which means that I actually start at negative infinity. So I'm going to start at negative infinity. And then I'm going to go reading from left to right, I'm going to go at the right-hand side of my graph. And again, if I look at my right-hand side of my graph, right there, I also have an arrow. That means that I'm going to continue to positive infinity. There's no starting or stopping on this one. My range, I can just have RNG. I like to use RNG for range, so I don't get it R for relation is I need to determine where I start or stop on this particular graph. So just like where you read left to right, we read from bottom to top. Down here, this is the bottom, this is negative infinity for our y's or our range, and this is positive infinity for our y's or our range. So I'm going to come across here and I'm going to start from the very bottom here. I'm going to start reading until I first see my graph. When I first see my graph right here, well, I'm going to call it zero. So it starts at zero, and I keep going, going, going. Oh, look, I have those arrows again. That means my range continues all the way up to positive infinity. Let's stop and take a few moments and talk about my uh, notations here. Now. With infinity and negative infinity, we always use a rounded bracket because it's not included. It's non-inclusive is what we say, so we always use a rounded bracket. If it's included, in this case it is because it's a nice solid line going through there, nice curve, no holes, no gaps, we use this squared off bracket right there. Included, inclusive is the squared bracket, non-inclusive or in exclusive is that rounded bracket. Okay, let's take a look at another graph where we have starts and stops. Maybe some jumps. So let's take a look at this graph. We're going to come here, we're going to go down like this, and we're going to stop with a closed dot. That's an arrow. And I'm going to jump over here with an open dot, and I'm going to go like that. Nice straight, that's a nice straight line. Okay, so with this graph, I have some starts and stops. Once again, I want to start way out here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to read to the right-hand side to find my domain. So my domain equals. Now, I'm going to introduce both interval notation, that's what we did before, and with set notation. So reading on my left-hand side, I see with my very left portion, I have got an arrow. That means I'm going to start with negative infinity. And I come across until I see the next starting or stopping point, which is right here. So that looks like it's about, if this is 1, we'll call that 1, that looks like it's, my graph is about negative 0.75. So it stops at negative 0.75. Oh, wait, wait, i got to change that because that is included because my dot right here is solid. So then I keep going, going from left to right, looking for the next time it starts, and it starts right here. This 
is an open dot. So I'm going to union, that's what this U is. So I'm going to union, that means it continues on. It is an open dot here, that means I have an open dot right there, or an open bracket, non-inclusive. And it starts at 1 again, and I keep going to the very end. My end has an arrow, that means I end at infinity. Oops, let's change that, let's erase that. Go back to my pen, not my highlighter. And I have infinity. There it is in, oh, I kind of lost my infinity up here. There it is in interval notation. I start at negative infinity. I go to negative 0.75 inclusive. I jump over some numbers and I start back up again at 1, non-inclusive, and I end at infinity. So there is my domain in interval notation. If I wanted to have it in set builder notation, I would have wrote it like this. D is equal to, I have to declare my unknown, which is X. This little line right here that I just drew, that is the replacement for the words such that. So I have X such that X is less than or equal to negative 0.75. That replaces this portion right here. I write the word and. X is greater than 1. And that replaces this portion right here. If you like set notation, go ahead and use set notation. If you like interval notation, go ahead and use interval notation. I think at some point, though, you need to be able to read both and do both because sometimes interval notation is so much easier and sometimes there are cases where the set notation is, is so much easier. It's implied here that you're working in the reals, so you don't have to write, you don't have to write X belongs to, that's what that funky E means, it means belongs to, and that R with a double line or a very solid deep R means the reals. You don't have to do that when you're talking about the set notation because you assume you're in the reals. The only time you have to declare where you are is when you're not working in the reals. Like if you're working in the complex, the whole, the natural, the integers. We're working in the reals. Okay, now let's talk about our range. We've got the domain. We're good with that. Let's talk about our range. So with our range here, Again, we start at the bottom, so we're going to have RNG, interval notation first, and bottom, I go all the way to infinity, negative infinity, so there's my starting point. And then I look to see, as I'm reading from top to bottom, if there's any jumps. So this looks about one and a half, that starts at two, so I do have a jump here. So this is going to go from negative infinity to 1.5 and then it's going to jump to 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 infinity. So I go all the way up to 1.5 and then I have a jump here until 2 and then it continues up to infinity. Now let's make sure that we've got the correct notations and on this one I do not have the correct end because of the fact is if I'm coming up here to 1.5, it is a nice solid curve here. So this one needs to be squared. Let's take a look at the 2. Oh, the 2 is open, so the 2 is fine. There it is in interval notation. If I want to do it in set notation, I'm going to write RNG is equal to now I'm going to declare my Y as being my range, my outputs. Y, then remember that line means such that. Y is less than or equal to 1.5. And Y is greater than 2. And there it is in both interval and set notation. All right, so you don't have the graph. You've got an equation. Let's take a look at an equation. We have y is equal to the square root 
product of x minus 3. What we want to do here is we want to determine what's going to make this function, because we assume it's a function, we're looking at domains, what's going to make it so that we don't have real numbers as outputs? So what we do is we look to see what we have, and in this case we have a square root. We know that negative numbers underneath the square root make it non-real numbers. So we're going to take this right here, and we're going to set it equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Actually, you know what? Let's set it greater than 0. So x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0 to have this to be a real number underneath the square root. So let's go ahead and solve for x. And so we have x is greater than or equal to 3. So our domain is any real number greater than or equal to 3. So here's my domain. Domain is equal to x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. There it is in set notation. Or I can go with a squared bracket, 3 to infinity. So there it is the square root. Let's take a look at one that looks like this. y is equal to x plus 2 over x. Whenever we have a rational equation, we've got to ensure for it to be in the reals that if there's a square root, it has to be greater than or equal to 0 underneath the square root, which we don't have on this one. But we have to ensure also that the denominator, which is this, doesn't equal 0. If that equals 0, I'm divided by 0, which is not in the reals. So the way I determine what my domain is on these rational um, equations is I set this thing and say x, my denominator, cannot equal 0. And that's it in this one. So if I wanted to do it with the set not notation, d is equal to x such that x does not equal 0. So then if I wanted to do it in the interval notation, start at negative infinity, go to 0, but jump over it, non-inclusive there, union with 0 to infinity. Again, I think at this point, I think the set notation is so much easier because it just follows right from what we call these restrictions right into our set notation. But again, if you don't like it, interval notation is fine. Let's take a look at another rational type equation. So, y is equal to x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So I need to determine what's going to make this non-real, and what's going to make this non-real is this denominator. So I set my denominator, x squared. Oh, that wasn't a very nice x squared. Let's erase that. x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. So as we take a look at this and we think, hey, wait a minute, x squared plus 1 will never be 0 because it doesn't factor over the reals. So if it doesn't factor over the reals, that means that no matter what I put in that denominator, no matter if I put a negative 1 or a positive 1 or 0 in for x in my denominator on this one, it won't matter because it's never going to equal 0, ever. So on this one, my domain, is all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity with interval notation. Or if I want to do the set x such that x belongs, that's what that funky e means, to the real numbers. Okay? Let's do one more that does factor, so we have to deal with that. So let's go on to the next page. Suppose we've got y 
is equal to the square root. We'll do 3 minus x. On the denominator, we'll do x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so this is like the worst of the worst. We have to deal with a square root, and we have to deal with a denominator issue. So let's work with a square root first. We know that 3 minus x has to be greater than or equal to. That should be greater than or equal to. Try that one again. Has to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's solve for x. Let's just bring x to the other side. So 3 is greater than or equal to x. And what this does is it gives me this one right here. That takes care of that. Unfortunately, I still have this denominator I have to deal with. So let's take this denominator and set it equal to 0 and factor it. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 3. Get that x in there. This factors into x minus 3 and x plus 1. I want to set this equal to 0. And the reason we want to set this equal to 0 is because if I set it equal to 0, I'll know exactly what values of x that will force this thing to be 0. So from this first one, I've got x is equal to 3. And I've got x is equal to negative 1. If x equals 3, then it's OK in the top, I get 0. But in the bottom, if x equals 3, I get 0. 0 divided by 0 is not in the real. So what I need to do is I need to come over here and change this portion of it. I know that x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 1. So this becomes x greater than, excuse me, 3 greater than x. Now if I look at negative 1, well, because the top says I, x has to be less than 3, then I have to look at this negative 1. Well, OK, so x can't be negative 1. So these are, these are what my domain is. I have got a domain. If I do it in set notation, x such that x does not equal negative 1, and x is less than 3. So there it is in set notation. x can't be negative 1. x can't be anything um, up to 3. can't have 3. It can't be larger than 3. If you do it in, in interval notation, then it's going to look like this. It's going to go from negative infinity to negative 1, non-inclusive. Jump over 1, so negative 1 to 3. So there is finding domains.